Oh, hey, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over DIY Auto School, and what I'm doing is I got me a plastic bumper cover that I have to paint, and I thought, you know, um, people do things different ways, and I thought I'd go ahead and show you the way that I do it, and what we're talking about, we're talking about painting plastic, all right? Painting plastic is totally different than painting metal. And there's certain steps that you got to take to prep the plastic up before you can paint it. And I'm going to show you that right now. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So what we got here is a brand new bumper cover. Now when you buy a brand new one you get three different types. You get two different aftermarket brands. One is a Kappa and the other one is just ordinary aftermarket. And then of course you get the factory OEM. Now of course we all know that the factory OEM is the best way to go if you have the money to afford to buy the factory OEM bumper cover. And this goes for any uh, parts, any parts for late model cars. Um, the next step down would be an aftermarket, but it's Kappa, C A P A. Do you understand what I'm saying? C A P A, Kappa brand. And that is as close as you're going to get to factory OEM original. Then you have the downgraded side, which is the Typical, cheapest, most inexpensive aftermarket brand that you can buy, and, and that's going to be like dirt cheap. I like to go with Kappa. They cost a little bit more money, but they're cheaper than OEM, and they fit very, very good. Another thing about the Kappa uh, brand aftermarket plastic parts that you'll purchase is the Kappa brand comes primer. It's just like the factory. If you buy the cheapest, inexpensive aftermarket brand that you can get, it's not going to be, listen to me close, it will not be primed. It will be bare plastic. So it's well worth the money to spend the extra cash and get the Kappa uh, uh, brand versus the cheapest, inexpensive aftermarket brand. So to start out, what I did is I unboxed my piece of plastic and I took some 320. This is 320 dry. You don't want to go any more than that. If you go over 320, what's going to happen is it's going to put deep scratches in your plastic, especially if you buy uh, the cheap, inexpensive bumper cover, the, the one undergraded from this one. Now, if you do buy the cheap, undergraded one, more than likely, what you'll want to do, you will not want to sand that. You'll want to use a uh, gray Scotch-Brite. And what a Scotch-Brite is, it is a type of material that you can actually scuff a surface with. It's a scuff pad. Now, you're looking at that and, you, and you're telling yourself, hold on, he just said gray. Yes, I did say gray. I don't have a gray one available to show you, but I do have a red one. Now, the red one is more coarse. You do not, let me pray again, do not use this on that. This is a very coarse. What you want to use is a gray Scotch-Brite, which is a fine, okay, it's a fine scuff pad. And then you will scuff that down. But on this particular bumper cover, what we did is we took some 320 and we dry sanded that. Now you can wet sand it too, but you're going to make a sloppy mess. The next thing I did, once I sanded it all down, I got it prepped and ready for paint, 
I used rubbing alcohol. Do you see that right there, people? Do not, never use, listen to close, never use wax and grease remover on brand new plastic parts. You want to use rubbing alcohol, not denatured, okay? No denatured alcohol, rubbing, the cheapest brand you can buy. Why are we using that? Because this will take all the impurities and suck all of the oils and unnatural disasters that this thing was created from out of the plastic. Even with this primer on it, it will still suck all that out and it will sterilize this piece of plastic to a perfect paintable situation. So remember, rubbing alcohol to clean plastic. Not wax and grease remover. The next step we're going to talk about is actually getting this 100% prepped up for paint. Now, we've already sanded it. We've cleaned it. We know it's sterilized. We know it's clean and ready to spray. But we didn't buy. Okay, this is just a scenario. Okay, follow me here. We bought the cheap, inexpensive one because we wanted to save money. We didn't buy the one that's already got the primer on it. So what's the next thing we need to do, my friend Pete, if we have the cheap, inexpensive plastic one that does not have a primer? The next thing that you need to do to your plastic is go ahead and apply one thin coat of adhesion promoter. Adhesion promoter is going to seal that plastic and it is going to promote the plastic. It will penetrate into the plastic and it will promote it so your epoxy primer and your paint will stick and will not flake off later. Very, very important if you buy the cheap, inexpensive one. Or possibly, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you, some of the factory OEM parts for some of these that you buy in some cars, uh, they are primed. Not every single bumper cover that you will purchase will be primed. If you get a primed one like I did, that's, you're getting lucky, okay? Because a lot of cars, and this is even OEM factory stuff, they don't prime them. They leave it up to the body shop to do the work. And if that happens and you get one that's not primed, this will be your next step after your rubbing alcohol. You have got to put a thin coat of this on there. When I say thin coat, I'm talking very fast. Okay? You don't sit there and spray it like you're spraying the paint on. You just want to spray it on and make sure that it's got a nice good coat all on top of it. And when I do it, I even get the backside. Because if it starts peeling back here, it's eventually going to start peeling up here. So we want to make sure that we get this, this product right here, we want to make sure we get that everywhere. What we need to do next, we need to move straight in to our epoxy primer. Now, let me go ahead and explain something real quick, and I don't want to take up your time or mine. Epoxy primer is not a sandable primer. This is a sealer. The way that you tell a sealer from a primer is by the hardener that you use. If the hardener actually says hardener, do you see that hardener? If it actually says that on there, it is a non-sandable primer. Let me get that can here. If it says activator, do you see right there, primer activator, that is a sandable primer. Okay? We are not using a sandable primer on this. We've already had the primer it's sanded. What we're going to do is we're going to go into epoxy sealer. Okay, now that we got our epoxy primer mixed up, let's go over there. I'm going to show you how to put the epoxy primer on.
that's about the whole situation right there of actually prepping your plastic parts and getting them ready to paint. This here is now ready to paint. I'll let it sit for approximately 30 minutes. Let the epoxy dry. You can see how nice it flowed out. You can see how nice it went on. If you are working with a plastic bumper that does not have primer on it or a plastic piece, you might say, plastic part, what you'll want to do is make sure you use the adhesion promoter and then go straight into epoxy primer. Let the adhesion promoter dry for approximately five minutes. It's done. You're ready to spray the epoxy. If you're working with a higher quality bumper and it has the primer on it, no need to put uh, adhesion promoter on it. You don't need it. This is all you need right here. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. I'm going to put two to three full wet coats of paint. I'll put two coats of clear on that, and hopefully it'll flow out. I won't have to buff it. I won't have to do anything. And when I come back, we'll go ahead and take a look at this bumper cover. Uh, once again, plastic part that I prepped from finish, start to finish and showed you how to do that and painted in full. All right, I just got done painting our plastic part. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and see what we got. So if we look right here, you can see came out really, really nice. The consistency came out awesome. And when I say consistency, you don't see any scratches. You don't see any deep gouges. Uh, everything looks normal. And this bumper cover or this plastic piece will last a very, very long time. And that's basically from start to finish, except for showing you how to paint it. But all the way up to the prep job to paint, that's exactly what you, I'm sorry, you want to do on your plastic part the next time you have plastic that you want to paint. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete over here at DIY Auto School in Moab, Utah, showing you how to do stuff and giving you tech tips on how to save your ass so you don't lose your ass. Take it easy. for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.